you are now live. Um, just reading this out, I do this every time because I, it's, it's just so, so, I'm not drunk, exciting. We're telling your followers that you've started a live video. How are you all? Um, this is my new backdrop. It's quite a sort of showy off here, grand as mine. I'm so excited about my guest. Oh, it's, it's, it's happening. Oh, I have to remember what I have to, uh, sparkly tight, you've waved at sparkly tights. Okay, um, quip, I love you all. Okay, send a request, so this is the right thing. And then I, um, I go, go live, go live with sparkly tights, fingers crossed. Sparkly tights isn't the name of the author. Um, I'm just allowing for a few seconds. Anyway, I'm here to talk about an amazing long-listed quip book. She, uh, obviously, uh, sparkly tights is not the real name of the author. Oh, go, she's there, hi. I, I'm beyond excited. Um, can you hear me? I can oh, indeed. God, you're so calm. Okay, so what I should have checked on the uh, dictionary of pronunciation, but obviously because this is quick, um, please say your surname to me out loud. I, want to hear I will name. indeed. It's Voitas. It's spelt Wojtas, but it's pronounced as if it was a V and a Y. Okay, so and can I just answer. say... Olga, Can I just say that for the past for the past year, I have been going around saying to everybody, "Comedy Women in Print oh, Prize," and it's only recently I discovered it's pronounced "quip." That's really good. That's it's really funny. Mind. For a wordsmith yes. such as yourself, that's a whole, that's twelve months of not being able to. But um, because you're so clever yes. and your book is extremely good, then we can move on. Because sometimes. Um, well, like your heroine, um, the obvious doesn't appear, does it? And that makes her, um, one of your reviews said enduring, but I thought it might have <laughs> meant endearing. And I was going to sort of right. kick off with how, how do you deal with the word endearing? Are we both comfortable with the word endearing? Or does it sort of smack of no. patronage? No, <laughs> I don't think we like endearing, no. Oh. But I have to tell you, first of all, I am beyond beyond excited yes. because you may remember we met a couple of years ago at the Scottish Association of Writers it's when you came to give the keynote to... address. Sorry, I'm, I'm but what done. you don't what you don't know is the story behind it okay. because um, I have a condition. I suffer from prosopagnosia, which is the posh name for face blindness. Oh. And I do not uh -huh. recognize people unless they have something very distinctive about them. Oh. Now with you, it is your gorgeous hair. Oh, the hair. So, oh, yes, so I was at the, the, I was at the uh, Scottish <laughs> Association of Writers and I saw you and I was going to come and talk to you. And then I thought, oh God, it might not be her. No, I won't. And then I realized that I was using that as an excuse because I'm such a fangirl. I realized I was going to come up and go, oh, naked video, I'm fab. Yeah, so so then I thought, calm down. Yeah. I thought, talk, talk to her. Yeah. And then later on that day, I saw you in the bar. Oh, now that's unusual. And I thought, that was very odd. I thought, <laughs> but I saw you at the bar and I thought, now don't be frightened. Go up and say hello. And you had an entourage. Yeah. Oh because God. obviously you go nowhere without your entourage. No. And I went up and I said, I'm such a fan. Add fab naked video. And it turned out it was a hen party from Glasgow and it wasn't you at all. This is a great end. I was, oh, because I was just beginning to blush. I was going to have to pretend I was Joanna Lumley where somebody was doing an ode <laughs> and I was going to handle it sort of gallantly and elegantly. And this is the punchline. So you, with the condition, which I've not heard of, and that's fascinating mm -hmm. in itself, went up to somebody else thinking that they were me and being a Scot as and don't we know that you're a Scot in the, from this book? I was going to ask you about that. So many references. And you also say we a lot, but not about your in, but there is a lot of, which is we is a nice word. But, um, and so did you talk to me at all or did you only talk to her? Well, what, what subsequently happened, you may remember that we had a very grand dinner 
And there's always this marvellous dinner in this wonderful hall that looks like Hogwarts. Yes. And because everybody is desperate to sit beside their friends, everybody starts queuing up about an hour beforehand oh to God. get into the dinner. <laughs> and I was in this queue with my friend and I said to her, this is awful. I said, I've been wanting to meet Helen Ledger all weekend and I haven't met her. And she said, she's in the queue in front of you. Oh, OK. And what happened then? What? Well, I was he... I was too scared to talk yeah. to you, but I talked to you eventually. I, I I sort of came up to you right at the end when there was sort of no time to, I and I said, <laughs> I and way? then I and you obviously thought this woman has had too much to drink. Well, because uh, or my or I might have had too much to drink. I yes. hope I was in some way cordial. I mean, this is the thing when one is this age, one can't remember, and you just remember the bad yes. times. And when people say they've seen you, or indeed you with your literary festivals, you just go, was that a good night? I always think of the worst, which um, isn't yes. endearing. It's just a condition of the anxiety of the comedian, uh, if you're my kind of genre. Listen, Olga, th you, this this book it is amazing. It's your second book. The first it one is. was song listed. And um, um, are you happy with it? And that's a really intelligent, uh, searing question to start with. Somebody said hello. Hi, Leslie. And um, Deirdre's on. Deirdre's, what, we're growing. You are part of our evolution of Quip's ability to engage with technology. You did amazingly. You are, okay, tell me about this book. I mean, I've read it, uh, most of it, and I've got <laughs> markers in that um, demonstrate my high interest in um, apportioned sections. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> well, I am reclaiming um, ladies of a certain age because I feel there's too many young people around and I don't really approve of it. Mm. So my heroine is 50 something. Yep. She doesn't admit to 50 what, but I think she's pretty damn close to getting her bus pass. Yep. And I have to say, um, after the first book came out, there was a man who wrote a crit of it. Yep. And I think he was a young man. As I say, I've got a thing about young people. And he said, this is ridiculous. This woman is supposed to be in her 50s and she talks like a teenager. Right. And I thought, excuse me, young man. I thought, come and hang with me and my homies oh, and you will find we are very hip to the groove. And um, hip to the groove, good phrase there. And do you think, and did you take the young man up on this? Did you, was it a bad review or a good review? Or did you just find an anomaly in it because you are very precise? And, and you know it was pretty. Knowledge. It was pretty much a bad review. So what <laughs> I did, which is my, what I, what I do under these circumstances, is I, I go and I hide under the bed and I sob. But it's quite because I, I can't stand. I can't stand confrontation. Of course, of course. I just, I just cry in corners. Yeah, writers hide. Um, and uh, what's fascinating talking to writers, um, and we don't want to dwell on the negative because obviously the whole thing is thrusting forward. And the, and the fact that I've just read only good reviews, only good reviews of your work. And, you know, the fact that um, what's interesting is um, that this is the second. Not many people write two verse, you know, like a what's the word where a word a concert? No, a, another word, uh, please, with the sequel. Sequel. Sequel is the excellent word, and so seamless and quick. Um, you know, so you know, people obviously wanted this character, and the, and and you are sorted now um, for the rest of your days, of, of which there'll be many. Um, now, oh, do you think this is a mashup of crime, comedy, surrealism, um, and so, uh, a lot of other things? I, I, that's why it's one of the elements of its uniqueness. Is it? It you can't really define it. But it's funny. I I don't know. I'm I'm hoping very much that my publisher isn't listening. Yeah, um, I'm no, sure they she won't. isn't. Oh, no, no, the she'll have nothing to do with this. Um, because I I I don't have an agent. I I sent this off to um, I sent the the first one. I sent off to a number of publishers, um, many of whom I have still to hear from. I have to say, um, but the the absolutely glorious Saraband said that they would publish it, and I was so thrilled because I love Saraband. And then they said we are publishing it under our contraband imprint, right. yes. which is our our crime and mystery imprint, and. I didn't know I'd written a crime book. Right. I thought I'd written a romp. Yes, but obviously, like because they were, 
you know, basically because they were publishing it, I didn't want to argue. Yeah. I wasn't going to say, no, I'm sorry, it's not it. a crumb. So it's I said, like yes, uh, of course. Yeah. I said, so yes, I would say it's exactly the mashup that you describe. Um, but, but, but nevertheless, um, reading it, it, it um, I mean, the, um, how would you do, let's go back. I, because um, I was reading it fast and we're in lockdown and uh, it, I find it difficult to focus. But um, Marcia Blaine, I, when I was Google, Googling Marcia, are also an electronics a Scottish band of music. Did you know that? Are they music? They are indeed. I did know that. Very yes. Appealing yes. Music, actually, just mm -hmm. because I need stimulation um, uh, of, of a music kind. So, Marcia, so you uh, have assumed this wonderful character. Uh, endearing and enduring and interesting uh, um, and and she says she challenges um, I'm doing my notes now heteronormative she said dis depressingly heteronormative which is an interesting word could you just define that be because we can't carry on without us knowing what that means heteronormative <sighs> It's difficult because, I mean, you know how they say your character takes over, you know, she sort of takes over and she puts in words yeah. which I may not necessarily know the meaning of. Um, what she's actually complaining about at that point is that there is this gorgeous young widow and um, all the men in the village are lusting after the gorgeous young yeah. woman and all their wives are hitting them around the head yeah. and she's just thinking it's sort of terribly gender stereotypical yes shona the heroine who is able to travel through time which we completely accept because it's funny as well mm -hmm. um uh, these these little observations just kind of weave in and out another one about labeling uh she notes because you are very precise and i i love your precision uh school teacher's wife wins mastermind we blainers retain our own identity whatever our marital status so obviously the character has been trained by explain the setup uh of the dreaded muriel sparks uh, say that yes. construct because that's actually quite key. It's Scottish yes. and nice. Anything Scottish. Is well, nice. me and Dame Muriel, we went to the same school. That's it. But it, no, which in my is chat, it says you once attended James Gillespie's high school, and I was then thinking, were you expelled? Because it said you were what? once. You what? Oh, I've shocked. You've, you've withdrawn. <laughs> this, you, you had to take a step. I back. I was a prefect. Oh my God. I attended it from the age of five yeah. until the age of 18. Dick of rock. Okay, got it. I was there for a while. And that, okay, tell us about that relationship with Muriel Spark and how that yes. segues into the character. Well, when I was there, because I am very, very old, when I was there, um, Muriel Spark actually published the book, The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. Yes. And I, I have to admit, I was slightly too young to remember that. But I do remember the, the film coming out, the great Maggie Smith film coming oh out. God. And there was also a play that came out. So, and the school, the, was, the school was absolutely horrified because the school thought that Muriel Spark had brought them into disrepute. Because, I mean, there are goings on There's sexuality in the book. and Aaron Jumper yes. and yes. Oh, puberty. Yeah. Wonderful. And the school would have nothing to do with it. It was really outraged. Now, of course, they're just absolutely delighted by it. And they, they keep sort of promoting this of the whole time. But on. I was just thinking, what if you had a heroine who had actually gone to Marcia Blaine's school and was just outraged by this book? And what if she was... A librarian, because Morningside Library is just down the road. Muriel Spark used to go there twice a week. I used to go there once a week. And I thought, what if she's there and she keeps trying to stop people getting the book? Yes. So that's your that's that's the kind of beginning, which is it's interesting. But then you you leap from that. I mean, the leap. Um, Deirdre is saying hilarious. Thank you, Deirdre. I love Deirdre because she. There are questions I have to. Um, Abigail Mann, who's our who's published from Quip, from the unpublished, sounds wonderful. This is a positive. But so from oh. that construct, which I needed cleaning up. You then, this character, how do you get the fact that she time travels? How do you make that, a, because I'm not a science fiction writer, this is, how, how do we just accept and go I'm, with you? I'm not a science fiction writer either, and <laughs> nor am I a crime writer, not that my publisher knows that. Um, we're keeping that from her. But um, basically what happens is 
Miss Blaine turns up and Miss Blaine, we think, is around 200 years old. They were not sure. And Miss Blaine simply says, because they, they, the raison d'etre of a Blainer is to make the world a better place. Right. And Miss Blaine has decided if she sends her girls on time traveling missions, they can make the world a better place, not merely in the here and now, but in the past. So she that. sends Shona on a mission. So you, all you need to know is that you suffer severe abdominal pain when you time travel. Yeah. And it's as if you're in a cold vortex. Yeah. And that's as much as you need to know. No, no, I like that. I like the way you tailed that. Because, again, you are so precise. That's as much as you need to know. When did you start writing? Because you just envelop your sentences in a very precise manner. There isn't, they're quite <laughs> sparse, but they're very clear. Um, yes. Have you always been like that? I started writing at a very early age. I was, um, I was an only child. And as I say, I'm very elderly. And in those days, we had to make our own amusement. Did you have an and I didn't. Boring question. Absolutely, yeah, yes. And I didn't have a recorder. So basically, I just had to write. That was all there was to do. Did you so can diary? I just hold up my, my elder flower cordial? Oh, God, this is so nice to meet you. Like when we're either not being mistaken as me or at the very... Um, you, it, what is interesting about you is you have great respect for form, but you also like to undermine it because obviously the drollness, which is a Scottish word, um, uh, does, it, it does reveal itself on every page. So you, you kind of know that the narrator is um, being uh, ironic, that, which is very rare, which is very, 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 very rare. So here's the thing. So you do allow jokes in your book. Uh, uh, and a bit of sexuality, but that's quite restrained, uh, which is fine. Yes. No bad thing to be restrained. Why not? Why not? Let's just go where we want to be. Uh, Lord Errol says, let me get you an occasional table. That always makes me laugh. This is shown to saying. I said, I wonder what it is the rest of the time. You see, I like the occasional table. I like that you because you are, you are attracted to what is literal and then you deconstruct it, don't you? I mean, you enjoy yourself, don't you? You enjoy. I do. I do. I basically wrote this because in, in real life, I'm a journalist. Oh, in real and life? I'm a, the writing? Yes, the and I'm a... Yeah. Joking. <laughs> and I'm a complete news junkie. And the news is just so bloody depressing that I wanted to write something that was sheer escapism. Right. Now, that really interests me. But to be escape, to, you have to bring your reader with you. And actually, again, a lot of the reviews... I mean, it is a miracle frankly, that you've managed to bring a reader with you that uh, that you kind of cross the, the 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 genre, which I love. I mean, comedy, crime. And I know that that is, there is something, we are growing more into comedy crime as we leave behind comedy romance, which is quite an exciting thing for Quip to, uh, all of us to recognise. Um, but you, how do you bring that, that character must be sufficiently connectable for, for people not to go, excuse me, you've lost me now, because suddenly we're we're in, uh, well, we, where is it set? In the 1900s? In an this is in 1900, yes, yes. Oh, it's about vampires. We can say that. I do, I, I know I'm talking too much, but I find it so interesting, because you turn things on their head, because you examine them, and then she uh, manages to do, um, donate blood to Dracula. Yes. I mean, donate is the key thing. Which is not the usual way round. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and I, that struck me. You just go, and you make it normal, which I find mm -hmm. so clever. So, um, so um, okay, so I need to ask you more things. I mean, the book is, um, oh, the other thing I like, the character says these little um, aphorisms that appeal to me. Uh, reading literature is very subjective. One per this is Shona talking. One person's detestable heroine <laughs> is another person's role model. So now I want to spark back to you. I wish I'd, I need to talk to you all night, but um, okay, we got enough time. So this point, one person's detestable heroine is another person's role model. Now, can we examine that as an essay title if we're actually looking at humour? I, I, what's your take on how how people vary in their uh, perception and appreciation of content? Because, you know, here we are trying to, who, here I am with my amazing team trying to do Comedy Women in Print, which you um, mm -hmm. only just understood. Uh, uh, <laughs> take a foray <laughs> into a word called quip, um, which is fine. It took me a week to sort that. 
Um, taste. What's your view on mm. taste? And is it hurtful? Yes. I think you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, humour in particular is so subjective. Yeah. And people like, there, there's all sorts of different forms of comedy on television yep. and, uh, and in right print. Yeah. And people, and people, some things leave people cold, some things people think are so funny. I have had friends telling me that, you know, you must watch such and such, it's so funny. Yeah. And I sit there stony faced. Yeah. So the only thing I could do with this was write something that amused me okay. because I don't think you can second guess and you, you can't second guess an audience. But I've had people saying, God, she is the most irritating creature. You know, I just, when I can't believe that? it. I want to talk, I'm going to sort them out. When do people say you're irritated? But it is fascinating you say that, Olga, because when things don't land, it's not neutral. With a woman and being different and funny, it is annoying for people. Mm -hmm. So how do you tackle that? No, I mean, I find that a fascinating reaction. How is that in writing or do they come up to the street in Princess Street? I've had, I've had somebody come up to me and say, you know, I couldn't read this. She is just she is just so irritating. Um, wow. And I've had, well, with that, what I do is I, I beam and I say, <laughs> yes, thank, thank you for your input. And then I come home and I go under the bed and I cry. That's it. That's it. For, for a short period of time, I hope. Crying is very cathartic anyway. We need to cry, particularly now. Um, when I got the stuff, I would eat chocolate. That was my thing. So obviously there, right, was a, yes. there is a consequence to receiving criticism when it's so glaringly personal. But, um, um, oh, I've got a question uh, from someone. Oh, God, this is so interesting. Um, uh, yeah. A question from Fiona Hughes. Has Olga been able to read in lockdown? Uh, Fiona is struggling. I'm sorry, Fiona is struggling. I am just, I'm just reading this message now from from Fiona, and I can say it's horrific. I mean, you would think I normally work from home anyway, so yeah. there's no change there. No. <laughs> and you would think <laughs> this is, you know, this is this is a writer's dream. It's not. My brain has turned to porridge. Wow. I am very discombobulated. I have got no concentration span at all. Yeah. And I'm finding it really difficult. And I'm thinking, but I've got all this free time. Well, that's not entirely true because I, I have had deadlines and I have been well, working and, I've read and I can do the things I must. You react to deadlines, but, I've read as well. Yeah. Um, somebody that's the only thing I react to. I, I cannot work without a deadline. If I don't have a deadline, I nothing happens. I, I defy you on that. Norman has said, Olga oh, adores <laughs> chocolate, which is... Um, something shared by probably 99% of the population, which almost makes you quite ordinary, which of course you're not. Um, but I, but I, no, I find that really fascinating about the discombobulation. Your standards are high. Um, have you have you got a pretend deadline that maybe might sort of uh, speed speed the word count? You know, can you not impose a, a sort of, you know, self-imposed deadline? You don't need my advice. You don't need my advice. I am celebrating your uniqueness. Um, uh, and going back to what you were just saying is you wrote, you wrote something that, was it that you would like to write or that meant something to you? What was the... It was something, it was basically something, I wanted something, if you like, that had no jeopardy. Because I was getting to the stage at that point, this was a, a few years ago, and I was getting to the stage at that point that I was actually getting stressed out by yeah. books which had tension in them. I was becoming upset. Okay, that's and I wanted something because you will have noticed that whatever happens to Shona, she's not bothered. She's no. fine. She yes. just gets through it. She, she, is, she has complete self-confidence. Yes. And I just wanted something where you didn't need to worry. You would know everything was going to be all right. Thank you, Deirdre. She thinks I'm a good in, uh, interview, but I think I talk over. Olga. She is correct. But I'm learned. Of... <laughs> I love you. And you are correct. Um, no, I'm, I'm just enjoying, I'm enjoying hearing your pearls of wisdom. And I, I know the people who have tuned in uh, are going to get so much from this interview because when you talk to authentic writers like yourself, you know, we, we are on our own. What is our purpose? What connects? And, uh, and what hurts us. So g going back to this, to Shona, it, what, what was important to you, but she connects with us. So you've made her what you, what um, takes the pain away from you. You, you. You've made her someone who doesn't go under. 
Yes, yes. And the key thing as well, I mean, the key thing is her age, seriously. I mean, I know I've been making fun of that, but she is fantastic. She's kick-ass. She is incredibly well-educated. She's well, not just a wee wifey. Like, uh, Alan Poe, which I was, if I had time, I would have Googled mm -hmm. him. No, she, she's, uh, um, but it isn't too much. It's like, we love her. Um, uh, oh, somebody's just come in. I've betrayed Marion. She's also a grammar whiz, yeah. But I, but we love. But what what it is? I am going to use the word endearing. You see, I wasn't going to, but it's endearing that someone has a passion and owns it, and uh, it, it's a decent passion, isn't it? To to know things. It's it's this is new, exciting territory that we're that you're giving us. Uh, I think that um, that the person is vulnerable but very strong. Um, that mm. sounds a bit wanky from the 80s. And I think as well, the fact that she she's a woman and, uh, OK, she is an absolute numpty because she doesn't <laughs> realise what's going on, but she is very, very knowledgeable. And that's something that we don't have, particularly with women, mm -hmm. you know, clever women, not a not girly swat. And, you know, she is somebody who is a girly swat, but would basically wear that badge with pride but she doesn't see anything wrong with being knowledgeable engaging. and she will she doesn't show it off to put people down but she just knows things is that and that, i think we go back to the, the the thing about comedy connecting which is authenticity so you go you know that this character um is, is almost perplexed by other people's uh, foibles and humanity but the fact that she's perplexed mm. by it uh, leads us to admire her it it, it is uh, um are totally connectable also if if we're um when you say um a mature woman can i just say i i am so many years older than you it's quite interesting that we're conscious of that and what are we conscious of are we conscious that we're no longer 30 is that a loss for us or is this not like a blooming i'm sounding a bit shakespeare it's i can't because i've had three glasses <laughs> of my welsh celtic wine um this is a celebration of what uh, of being 50 plus obviously i'm a decade above you you know i think this is a very exciting time and um we, we mark it you're marking it but i think this is exciting with whatever whoever we are oh i'm sounding like a propagandist now which i'm not i'm just so excited that your book that your second book is doing so well Oh, we're running out of time. I want, oh, well, you have to come back. Oh, no. As a journalist, um, you also write under another name. Is that in erotica or sportswear? <laughs> what, what is the... Look at the face. Look at the face. So what is the genre of the other name? The it, is, it, is, it is cozy crime. Cozy crime? It is very cozy crime. It and cool it's, okay. it's set in the Cotswolds. And I write for it's. I write for a German company. I was commissioned by a German company to do this, yes. and they they basically publish in both English and in German. So Both's they're they're e-books, and they were just about to publish the first one when they suddenly came back to me and they said, uh, "Olga Voitas, uh, th this is not an English name." No. And I said, "No, no, you're, you're correct. correct. That this is not an English name." <laughs> And they said, but you must have an English name because it's 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 like Midsummer Murders. It's quintessentially I English. Things, Olga, because my brain's so fast it's... and manic. So you're explaining the precedent. So then you had to come up with an English name in order to absolutely. To so my my middle name is Helena, and I grew up in Marchmont Road. So I'm now Helena Marchmont, who I think sounds very posh. It does. Um, on names, because you have a feel for it. The name for this um, opera singer in the book is called Mary Garden. And can I just say that name, Mary Garden, just lifts my spirits. I just think the name Mary Garden is like, um, in fact, in real life, I do know somebody who has the sur surname Wardrobe, that there is such a thing as Wardrobe. Oh, in Wonderful. Real life, um, which amused me and I knew it would amuse yeah. you. And it's just this delight but i can see that you're being factual here because you are but can i tell you that <laughs> but can i tell you that mary garden was a real person okay. and she actually was debussy's muse debussy wrote the opera peliasi melisande oh, for her she came from I'm aberdeen yes and <laughs> if you go to aberdeen they have a mary garden garden 
How and good is that? I'm coming to, uh, mm. I don't know where, you're in the Scottish world, aren't you? you're in the, um, somebody has said, I'm in Edinburgh. Nip off, Cam, lip fest, nip off now, but fab. Into, yes. Do you know, it's so weird, because I'm learning how to do this. I, you know, this is new with lockdown and comedy women in print. You are a, a long lister, a second time long lister. And uh, I just love what you're doing. It's, it just, it, I'm not saying it defies definition, but we've enjoyed defining. I know I'm still talking too much, but have you enjoyed this? Just give me some love. I just want some love now because it was a bad day. Just a bit of love. Totally. A tiny bit of love. Totally. Would be yes. <laughs> so with I this is this has made lockdown worthwhile. Um. So um. Oh God. There's so many more things. So we'll do another thing. Genres mashup, romp. Crime, originality, wordsmithness, uh, authenticity, ultimately. Um, and uh, because I have to uh, finish in the half an hour for the law, um, we're going to see you on the quick website, Comedy Women in Print. Um, and uh, somebody said, Fiona said, there are other readers, not just the same person that I read out. Thank you. Wonderfully funny. It feels like I'm in a bar with you two, except you're on oh. the other hour. Cheers. Um, love you, Olga. Talk again. This is going places. I think it's a Hollywood thing. And remember, I'm of the right age because I'm only 50 myself. Love you so much, Lai. Um, And speak soon. Hurrah. Okay, Thank you fun. so much. I'm pressing end. Thank we're you. We're going to meet again, Olga. You're fab. End. I Thank really you. I want to end your live in uh, video. I'm saying end.